Previously on Brotherhood. Maybe you should come back as my majority leader. No thanks. Now when this term is up, I'm out of politics. I own most of the land around here, you know? But what I don't own, I need the state to grab under eminent domain. What if the state agreed to pay double the appraised value of the land inside the eminent domain zone? What would you say if I could deliver double the assessed value on all your land inside the eminent domain zone? Cassie and I split up. I'm sorry, Deco. I am. Janikowski's gonna know he's being set up. Who can the mark's like doing a cha-cha? Two steps forward, one step back. Lucy, got some splaining to do. Colin, back me. What happened? No, it was an accident. I think he's fucking cat. Colin wouldn't do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, you like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You sit on your fucking skinny ass all day. My mother worked every day of her life, but her fucking house was neat as a fit. So your mommy is a fucking anal retentive shrew who couldn't hold on to a man. What did you say? You heard me. My mother is a fucking saint compared to you. Then go worship her. Kid of the kind I recommended that one. It's about a man who falls in love with a blow-up doll. <laughs> Not the dirty type of blow-up doll. I don't feel much like a movie. Well, there's the last one. Oh. Love in the time of cholera? Okay. It's not the greatest title, but... Michael? Hey, Ma. Cat finally throw you out, huh? No, of course not. I uh, just need a good night's sleep, all right? I'm, I'll see you tomorrow and I'm crashing out. Not upstairs, you're not? That's Colin's room now. It's okay, I'll sleep on the couch. <laughs> you do no such thing. Michael can sleep on the couch. Sheets for the couch are in the lower shelf of the linen closet. He's downstairs in the couch. What happened? He went fucking nuts. That's what happened. Did he say anything? About... What would he say? We haven't done anything. Right. Right, 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 right. I think he knows something, Colin. There's nothing to know. Right? Don't worry.
Yeah, I want the roof to extend over the entire porch. Yeah, and the pitch needs to be lowered a little. It's kind of Hansel and Gretel at the moment. Uh, listen, can you make those changes and fax them over to me? Thanks. You busy? Uh, never too busy for you, Mr. Speaker. You need to tap into your knowledge bank. Look, I know you got one foot out the door, but the taxpayers are still paying your salary, so, uh... So, what do you need? Hanley and Fratelli. I need both their votes to get the budget passed. But both of them want funding for the districts to get bridge repair. And you've only got money for one bridge. Exactly. So I offered both of them half funding for two years. Both said no. Well, they both got elections to win. So what do I do? I don't know. Flip a coin. You know what? Should have trusted my instincts on this. <clears throat> Not bothered you with it. Look, take them both out for steak dinner. Together. Okay, let Hanley choose the wine because he considers himself a connoisseur. And don't talk business with Fratelli until he finishes his third martini. After that, you'll find him much more friendly. That's it. That's it. You're the man with the answers, Tommy Cathy. I know no deals going down on the waterfront. Is there something about me that looks stupid? I'm telling you. Tommy and Don Don have decreed it. Tommy Caffey and the Speaker Donatello have declared absolutely no deals on the waterfront? Why would they go and do something like that, huh? That's above my pay grade. Speculate. Because they're greedy pigs. Tommy cuts a sweetheart deal with Bob Mira, pays double the appraised value for the land seized under eminent domain. Why would he cut such a terrible deal for the state unless he's getting a piece of the action? Here you go. Hey, that's on us. Ten of the parcels that were seized by eminent domain were owned by some company, uh, uh, BSC Holdings. BSC Holdings. Wait a minute. Wait a yeah, minute. Did it ring a bell? Yeah, I remember that. Right here. Just a minute. Here it is. BSC. It's a holding company controlled by Alphonse Nazoli. The House leadership rigs a deal that directly benefits the state's biggest mafioso. It's a deal brokered by Tom Caffey. Yeah, and Bob Miro. Fucking Tom Caffey keeping the waterfront clean. That's bullshit. All right, so we got we got Tom Caffey, Alphonse Nazoli, and Bob Miro is the missing link. You see the Texas law in Colorado? You can use whichever bathroom you want based on the sex you think you should have been born. What the hell does that mean? It means some fruitcake wants to be abroad, but he can't afford the operation. He can go to the girls' room. I want his ass in the women's bathroom, so that's a good law. Yeah. You all right there, boss? You got a crick in my neck. What if I want to use the women's room? You can't. What happened with the sex you're born? Cops gonna tell that by looking at me. Hey, how many? Me you remember you're supposed to meet Nazoli in a half an hour? Don't need you to be my calendar. Well, we better get going because radio says 195's backed up. Finish your game. Freddy's riding me today. Freddy, let's go. That's uh... playing cards. What's with all this new age bullshit? I mean, they're fucking robins, you know? They're not flying to my yard from the lost continent of Atlantis. Why don't you buy one of those? Put a St. Francis statue next to it, they'll cancel each other out. <laughs> you got him well trained. So what am I doing here? What do you want? My guys aren't getting any construction contracts on the waterfront. The word is that your brother's on some kind of moral high horse about keeping the waterfront squeaky clean. What's that got to do with me? Don't even fucking waste my time with your bullshit, okay? Do you really expect me to believe that your brother's not giving out jobs to you and your Mick cronies? You can believe whatever you want. Except in what you gave me, I got no part of the waterfront action. I know calling you a liar at this point would probably be counterproductive. So instead, I'm going to politely ask you to tell your brother that he needs to open up the tab so people 
beside you can wet their beaks. My beak is bone fucking dry. My brother's got nothing to do with me, and I got nothing to do with him. You're not gonna deliver on this for me? It's not that I won't, but I can't. Hey. You. You got any bird bass for birds that don't look like they need their fucking fortunes told? Regular shit. This? You know, what you did turning down Azuli was a mistake. What the hell with Azuli? Man doesn't want to believe the truth when he hears it. I can't help him. What you could have done was shine him on. Said you'd make an effort. Wait, I should quiver in my boots as well? Maybe piss my pants? Fuck it. <clears throat> Look, I know the guy's mind works. He's a prick. Bow and scrape just a little bit. He doesn't take it so personal when you tell him no. I get this ball in the hole and the volcano goes off, I get a free game. Oh. Free game! All right, I'm not explaining this well. <laughs> Every time you sell a pill to one of your golfing customers, I get five bucks, right? I give you 300 pills, that's 1,500 bucks. That's what I gave you. That's 1200 bucks. You either cough up the rest, or I'm gonna take six of these putters and shove them up your ass, and then I'm gonna wrap you around the windmill. You understand? He's right, Mo. 1500, it's all there. Let me see. Excuse me, sweetheart. Um, can we get two cappuccinos, please? Uh, just for him. Check for me. So, you, Tom Caffey, and Alphonse Lazzoli, huh? Mind if I sit down? May I join you? You're bent. I know you're bent. You know you're bent. Alphonse Lazzoli knows you're bent because you're in his fucking pocket. I'm gonna write down your badge number. Yeah. Sure, it's, it's, it's right there. Then I'm gonna go back to my office, file a complaint with your commanding officer. Well, see, I, I, I don't have a commanding officer. I'm head of a freelance task force, so that gives me the authority to fuck with who I want, when I want. Well, we all have to answer to somebody. You know, I actually don't need you to tell me anything. No. See, all I need so that guy sitting over there, see him? The guy in the blue shirt, the one giving you the stink eye ever since I sat down. I just need him to see us together. Because see, he's, he's gonna go report that to Nizzoli, which unfortunate for you, is gonna give Nizzoli the impression that you're talking to the cops, even if you're not. Uh, just a check. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a committee meeting in 10 minutes. After that, I'm gonna call the head of the state police and get you suspended. Yeah. Hey, enjoy the rest of your afternoon.
can, can, can I help you? I'm trying to do some work downstairs. All oh, right, Captain. Sorry, Captain. I was just practicing my close order drill. You just keep it down, okay? You got it, Captain. I'm not crazy. I, um, I'm a, re a reenactor, Civil War. <clears throat> Stem from Virginia under Major General George E. Pickett. Chicken, must order in steak and lobster at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I must fix price many a bullshit or two appetizers. Thank you. Ma, pick yourself out a nice bottle of wine. We don't need a whole bottle. Don't do the nice stuff by the glass. Come on. It's mm. <laughs> very fancy, Michael. Well, you know, it's not every day a man gets to take out the two most beautiful women of his life and spoil it, Ronnie. Here. <laughs> Anything you like there? Not at these prices. We get. Please, don't worry about the prices, okay? As far as you're concerned, the prices don't exist. Marty. <clears throat> Is there a nice family over there? Oh, yes. Send them over a bottle of champagne. Tell them it's from me. We have a very nice Verve Clicquot. No, the house is good. <laughs> right away. Hey, uh, it ain't like that fucking family, right? Excuse me. <laughs> this is a gift from the gentleman in the corner. Is that, um, someone you work with? No, it's a friend. Just paying his respects. Domestic. Well, it was nice anyway, huh? <laughs> Sees them with my family, you know. Cheapest one on the list. Let me see that. Thirty-two fifty. Maybe they only had domestic. Doesn't look like he's drinking domestic. That's good. Oh. Domestic champagne gives me a headache. There you are, ma'am. None for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I see the crib finally made it out of the box. I think the box made it out of the trash. So maybe by the time the baby's in first grade, he'll actually have a place to sleep? Yeah, I'd say kindergarten at the latest. Tommy, we've really got to get it put together. Hey, you want to do it right now? Not really. Don't worry, it'll be built by the time you start having contractions. I promise we can do it tomorrow. Absolutely. money I make for that prick? A and he sends my family the cheapest bottle of fucking champagne on the menu. Better have sent nothing. Because it's not only cheap, it's bad. I drank some of that stuff on New Year's. It's like drinking carbonated piss. Maybe Nizzoli doesn't know champagne. It's French. What would he know from France? When you find out where his mother lives, send her a bottle of Asti Spumati. Yeah. What's his mother done to anybody? No, no, no. no. How about this? I sent him a bottle of... No, I sent him a fucking case. That champagne that the rappers drink, up to the $400 a bottle shit, with a big bow on top, teaching some fucking manners. What? Yeah, Colin, delivery boy. Get a case of that shit over Nazoli, fast you can. Me? No fucking way. Pop me on principle. Yeah, make sure it gets there before cocktail hours. And get yourself somewhere else to sleep tonight. I'm not sleeping on that fucking couch again.
good one, Mr. Captain. Tommy. Hey. I'm glad I caught you. I want to do uh, thank you for the suggestion. I am taking Hanley and Fratelli to McCormick and Schmicks for dinner on Thursday. Good. Hey, and I was thinking uh, maybe you could join us. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But look, I swear, it's the last thing I'm going to ask you to do. Tommy. You don't need me. You need three T-bones, nine martinis, and a bottle of Paulia. I don't think it's going to be that easy. It took three songs and a dance to get him to agree on a restaurant. Come on, it's a free dinner, and all I ask is that you work the Tommy Caffey magic on it. Come on. Tommy, you've always been better at this than I am. Oh, I've never known you to plead insecurity. I just need a hand getting this damn budget passed, and then I'm going to let you sail off into retirement. OK, I'll be there. Rezzy's at 6. I'll have you home to Eileen by 10. Hey, so I didn't get suspended. Does that mean we're talking? So you'd step away from the car, please. Are you too stupid to be afraid? Is that it? I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, you know, they all say that. They all end up dead, too. This isn't going to work. Well, if you sell it, right, just scare the piss out of them. Use your best mom voice. Walk out of your house. Walk out the front fucking door of your house. Someone you don't want to piss off. I'm outside now. I think he's coming. Keep it up. Look, if you scare him bad enough, he'll talk. If he talks... Man, the whole viper's in this comes down. I know if they got it. Here he comes. You see me? I'm right here. I'm watching you. I know when you're sleeping and I know when you're awake. And I know when you're schmoozing with cops. Like the good old days, Ma, huh? Except in the good old days, I can remember what was in the cupboards. Yeah, well, Colin reorganized them. I don't understand, Michael. Why isn't he coming home for his dinner? I mean, where's he going to sleep tonight? Don't worry about him. You know, he's got stuff to do. He's, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. Yeah, well, don't you think that you can throw him out just because you decide you want your bed back? No, that's... Look, this was his idea, all right? He, uh... He thought maybe we should spend some quality time together. I just fucking rememorize all this. Watch your language, mister. Sorry, sorry. What are you looking for? Just look at this servant plate. So I stopped by Hennessy's on the way home. Fresh baked croissants. It's still warm. I can't. They give me heartburn this late in the day. Well, we'll stick them in the fridge. We'll have them for breakfast. Don't bother. I'm washing my girlish figure. Just make the tea, would you? Yeah. The tea, Michael, is in the pantry. Honestly, you're no use to me at all. I might as well do everything myself. Now, if Colin were here, I could relax. Lemon berry breeze. Or I'm the good old Lipton's Irish breakfast. Here, open this, would you? Lid's too tight. Well, it's not tight, huh? You OK? You got something wrong with your hair? Just give me a damn biscotti. Give me a biscotti, OK? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Hey, you talking today? We already had that conversation. I thought you would have had a change of heart. Nope. Well, what about you and your friend Nizoli, huh? Everything hunky dory between the two of you? Because if it's not, I'm the only helping hand you got. I'm not interested.
you out of your own mind. This is over the line. I mean it. I'm not kidding. If you want to go down this road, that's your business. I'm out. It's fine. Fuck it, pussy. You tell that Scott Sacazo I wouldn't fill my fucking bird bath with his champagne. He thinks you disrespected his mother. Oh, fuck him. Now when he wants to deal with me, he does it through you. You're his fucking ambassador. Oh, no disrespect. I can't do that. I mean, not that I blame you. Michael's fucking nuts. But he's also running the show. Chain of command's chain of command. You gonna stay loyal to him? What do you wanna do? Put my head in a fucking noose because you're pissed off? There's no law saying the Irish have to have a presence in Rhode Island. Either he talks through you, or he doesn't talk at all. I've got a meeting tonight. Can you pick up takeout from that Indian place? I can. I got a dinner thing with Don Don. Thanks for letting me know. Listen, he sprang it on me at the last minute. You know, I won't be late. I thought we were going to finally get the crib put together. Do it this weekend. Bye. Since David's got the tougher re-election race this year, he gets to build his bridge. The next year, you can build yours in South Kingston. You want me to go back to my constituents with nothing? No, it's uh, Victor. Yes, Mr. Caffey. Uh, can I get another martini for Rick Fratelli? And you got any of those regular ones? No more of the blue cheese ones, OK? Uh, of course, right away. How do you feel about parks? Say, 10,000 to refurbish the Alonzo Street playground. And on top of which, I think we can find a few thousand more to save the Tiger Beetle campaign, which your wife mentioned at the 4th of July picnic. You do that? Yeah, we'll make it part of the wetlands initiative. Well, <laughs> save the tiger beetle. No, we're not saving anything. We're letting him tell his wife that he got money for the tiger beetle fund, which in turn will get him laid. It is amazing how good you are at this. <laughs> Happy to be of service. Uh, now if I could just get the rest of these reps in line. I'll take a look at this. Not if you don't need me. Well, I don't need you. I mean, I could use you, but I don't need you, all right? Now give me the list. <laughs> this bastard. Hey, honey, it's me. Hi. Hey. Listen, I'm sorry I'm late. The speaker was just... Who did this? I did. You know, I thought we were going to do it this weekend. Well, now your weekend's free. How was your dinner? Well, you know, dinner was okay. It was, you know, I was going to put it together. Well, now you can do the changing table and get the diaper genie and all the rest of it. You know, I've just been busy at work. 
Yeah, so have I. Except when I'm sitting at my desk, Asan reminds me he's there by playing xylophone on my ribs. For Christ's sakes, Tommy, we haven't even talked about names. I mean, if the kid's not gonna have stuff, at least we could give him a name. I got it, okay? I'm not the enemy. Who is it? Hold on a second, I'm coming. Oh, shit. Oh. <clears throat> uh, hey, Captain, uh, I just, uh, just want to apologize for disturbing you before like I did. Yeah, I'm kind of busy. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> me, me too. Right. Right. Hold up, look, Captain. This is for you. At ease. Lucky man. So if I started my car? Well, no, you would think, but uh, the explosive was actually triggered by a cell phone. It seems like Nazoli's guys learned a thing or two from our insurgent friends in Iraq. Um, excuse me a minute. Tell me what I have to do to protect my family. Hey. Hey. I know you're doing me a favor, but, uh, we met at a bar or something? Uh, I got a wife on the warpath. You want to give me a hand? Are you going for the Jack Kennedy look here? No, it's not a rocking chair. It's a glider. It's a present for Eileen to sit in while she's nursing. You ready? Yeah. Uh. Be careful. Yeah. So, uh... You get a chance to look at my budget problem? Yeah, you don't have the numbers you think you do. You've, uh, you've counted Calabrese and you, and you can't count his vote. They'll say you got it, but the 11th hour will hang you out to dry. 
And as for getting Bianchi on the train, Leo's Charlie Ingham a favor over the milk label bill. So if you get Ingham, you get Bianchi. And you get Ingham by giving his assistant an extra personal day. Why, are they, uh, they sleeping again? Yeah, he wishes they were. <laughs> okay, and you can get, uh, you can get McGuire and Zerilli by agreeing to their LNG proposal. All right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. LNG. Ugh. I will take uh, full credit for your insight at the leadership retreat on Saturday. Hey, what time is it? <laughs> what do you care? In well, case you need help with Zerilli. Tommy, really... look. I can't have you at the retreat. I'm using it to uh, pump up whoever I anoint as your successor. So uh, I don't want the troops to see you there and just remind them I haven't got anyone half as good as you. So watch your hands here. Flip. OK, watch your step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what do you think? You bought a glider? Yeah, yeah, you're going to love it. It's really comfortable. Where's the other stuff? We'll get it this weekend. Look at this. Or next weekend, or the weekend after that. Uh, what unforgivable sin have I committed now? We don't need a glider. We need a changing table, and a diaper genie, and a, a bouncy seat. Yeah, but explain to me how the baby's gonna need that tonight. You could have bought everything on that list, but you bought one thing. Yeah, a, a... Yeah, a, a chair, where I'm gonna be sitting alone in the middle of the night with a crying baby while you sleep the sleep of the dead because you got an early meeting, or a caucus, or a vote. I bought it for us. <sighs> yeah, when did you suddenly grow boobs? No, there are such things as bottles, you know. Yeah, that's right. Where are they? Did you buy any? No, I didn't know what type to get. We've had three children, and you can't remember what brand we use? No. Playtex, Vent Air. They sell them at Target. I was going ahead, unless you need me. Why would I need you? Right. Hey, call. Where'd you sleep last night? Tommy and Adams. No, I'll tell you what. Kath wants me back. She's... She needs me, you know. The kids, why not? So, uh... You can have your upstairs when I'm back. Kath wants you back? Yeah. Oh, she's a needy cunt for what you're gonna do. Well, you better tell Rose. She'll be upset. She loves having you at home, you know? Yeah. That's all right, you talk. Okay. Good night, then. He goes, well, this ah, ah, it's so hot. And Molly Bear says, you're an idiot. You know how you eat a hot food. You take a spoonful, and what do you do? What do you do with a hot food? You having a good time? Just waiting for the ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> Goddamn Joe Flannery. Him and his thrift store bow tie. That tight ass prick wouldn't pay 10 cents to keep an honest man from hanging, much less vote an extra 20 grand for school lunches. <sighs> None of this is your problem anymore, is it? Nope. You're doing a smart thing, Tommy. Stepping down. Yeah. Like running the kindergarten. Hey, you remember that guy? That said between you and me our first term? Remember? Mm -hmm. What's his name? Uh, 
You know what I'm talking about. He used to whisper in my ear, tell me what was going to happen before it happened. Not because anybody told him. He just, he just knew how all these machinations worked. What was his name? Yeah. Anyway. He's probably playing golf, laughing at the likes of us, sitting here to the wee hours. Probably. Nice guy. <clears throat> Stall. Excuse me? You got a stall. You're not gonna get Flannery until at least 11 o'clock. That's when his wife starts calling every 20 minutes to see when he's coming home. Anything else? Yeah, turn the air conditioner off. That, uh, documentary about the penguin starts in a few minutes. Lovely. Unless you plan to watch something else. I had no plans, except to welcome you home. Membership will have five minutes to cast their votes on the bill. Thank you. All right. Unlock the machine. Halloween. What? That was a guy's name that sat between us. Halloween. I think I heard that he put together a website of Rhode Island wildflowers. And some award or something. Who'd you get to replace me? You leaving? What do you think of Campbell? Campbell? Oh. Uh, you hate it. No, I think it's a good name for soup. Billy? Kevin? Tommy Jr. No. No, my son's having his own name. There's always Hey You there in that crib. So strange as a woman got me down. Ain't gonna be your damn fool again. 
driving tonight just to ease my mind. Man in his mood is the most dangerous kind. And there was a time my head went flying, couldn't see the sign of time. Years would go by before I wondered to or where or what or why. Loving you is like loving a house on fire. Burning and learning, baby, when the damage was done. And now I'm tired and I'm scared and wide open to the rest of my life. Face to face with what I've been running from all these years. It hangs a dark cloud over the moon. For off to this roadside dive and maybe test my sobriety. Order a tall cold gin to rain. 